Hello everyone. Now we will continue with the fundamentals of human thermal physiology. Okay. So, uh, earlier uh, uh, lecture we have discussed the uh, condition where the uh, environmental temperature is lower than our body temperature and uh, that temperature was uh, actually 23 degree Celsius. Now, we will uh, uh, discuss one situation which is just reverse opposite, where environmental situation uh, temperature is more than the body temperature. Now, so this model it shows that environmental temperature is 45 degree Celsius and at 45 degree Celsius the skin temperature is uh, considered to be around 37 degree Celsius, it is not 34 degree. The lower temperature skin temperature is there when the environmental temperature is lower than the body temperature, but when temperature rises above the uh, core temperature like 37 degree Celsius always our uh, human phy our physiology tries to keep the temperature at 37 degree Celsius equal to uh, core temperature. So, here the skin temperature is 37 degree Celsius and even the temperature increases our uh, body physiology always tries to uh, control the temperature maintain that temperature by different physiological uh, activities like uh, sweating and all. So, 37 degree Celsius is uh, considered to be the skin temperature at that 45 degree Celsius environmental temperature. Okay. Now, here we can see that uh, the all the common uh, thermal transmission uh, processes like conduction, convection and radiation all this uh, activity all these processes actually uh, transmits heat from environment to the body and our body also temp, uh, generates extra heat of 90 watt that is uh, basal production of heat. Okay. So, even when we are inactive, so that also that time we uh, produce 90 uh, watt heat metabolic heat this becomes a problem because the we are actually uh, receiving heat from all the uh, directions. So, basic we have to now release it, we have to balance the heat. So, our ability to exist in such a condition is only by cooling through evaporative perspiration. So, that is the only activity through which our body can be cooled down. Okay. So, at a temperature of 45 degree Celsius, the evaporative evaporation process must overcome all this heat uh, which we are receiving. So, our body temperature is uh, as I have, we have discussed that skin temperature is uh, 37 degree Celsius. The skin temperature would be expo expected to rise to 37 degree Celsius at which point our perspiration will initiate. It will get initiated at 37 degree Celsius and the as we have discussed that as the temperature goes on increasing the perspiration will also increase and to maintain the skin temperature at 37 degree Celsius if possible. If it is not possible then we have to see the alternate way we have to see some this is the physiological physiological uh, process which will always try to keep the temperature maximum temperature 37 degree Celsius. So, now, as we have already seen uh, in case of cooling condition, the uh, similar assumptions we will uh, keep here like our body uh, area, total body area is uh, 2 square meter and emissivity is 0 0.97 okay. and if we use the same equation this uh, equation. So, we will get the overall net input of heat by radiation which will come out to be 109 watt. So, here the uh, here T hot means 
here what is the T hot? T hot means environmental temperature which is 45 degrees Celsius that means 273 because this has to be in uh, temperature has to be in Kelvin uh, scale. So, 273 plus 45 this will become T hot will become 318, 318 degree Kelvin and T cold that means uh, 37 plus 273 it will become 310. <coughs> now, using all these parameters plus T hot as uh, 318 and T cold as 310 if we see we will get the value approximately 109. Okay. Now, here you can also see so, if it becomes 50, what will be the heat uh, radiative heat? So, that way you will see the it is a uh, radiative heat transmission through our uh, to our body or from our body, it is always measure amount. Now, in suppose we are in front of um, uh, fire, so their heat uh, uh, temperature may be uh, more than 100 degree Celsius, more maybe 150, 200 degree Celsius. In that case, you can imagine the level of uh, uh, radiative heat. So, there we it is very difficult to survive without any clothing. In that case, we have to use some special clothing that we will discuss later. Okay. So, after radiative heat, so then it comes the main activity which is cooling by perspiration. So, here in earlier case at the room, uh, room temperature when room temperature is 23 degrees Celsius, we have assumed that we have seen that insensible perspiration is around 600 gram per day. But when temperature becomes say 45 degrees Celsius that it people will start sweating that in that case the total liquid total fluid or total moisture transmission will be approximately 7.5 liter say per day 7.5 that is this is an assume it may be assumption this may be more or a little bit less than that. So, when the ambient temperature is above the body temperature then the radiation conduction and convection all three common uh, mechanism transfers heat transfer heat to our body ok. Since there must be net outward flow because net outward flow means 690 what we produce that uh, heat has to be flown out. So, the only mechanism is the perspiration. So, perspiration has to be very very high so that you can get the uh, cooling effect. So, if you see that uh, total perspiration here. So, in earlier case we have assumed that it is a 600 gram per day. Okay. And other assumptions are uh, same like your uh, at 37 degree Celsius that uh, heat of vaporization latent heat of vaporization will be 500 calorie per gram that is the, that is assumption. And if you convert this heat like for average 7.5 liter per day evaporation that is a, uh, in place of 600 gram now it is 7.5 kg okay, of water per day. So, if you in place of 600 it has become 7.5 liter. Okay. Now, so uh, this 17 watt that which is uh, which is we are uh, transmitting you can convert it so it will become 207 watt. So, that huge quantity of heat is uh, transmit getting transmitted from our body that means this is required to balance the heat. So, that way this heat balancing takes place. Okay. Now, consider we are we do not perspire, but persp we stop perspiration due to something that means the our body core temperature will start increasing then we, we cannot survive. At the same time suppose we have we, are, we have used uh, wrong clothing which is not allowing our body to uh, that uh, we sweat to get evaporated. In that case will not be we will not feel comfortable. Okay. So, then comes the conduction 
Conduction is all, uh, always uh, earlier also you have seen it is always uh, it is uh, insignificant 8 watt conduction and this you can we can get from the earlier value T hot becomes that uh, your 318 this is uh, 310 and the similar equation we can get 8 watt. Okay. So, Q by T approximately it is 8 earlier it was we have seen I think it is 11. Okay. Now, what we have seen here till now unclosed person in in uh, cold condition when room temperature is 23 degree Celsius and also in warm condition when uh, room uh, the environmental temperature is 45 degree Celsius. This we have seen the heat uh, flow how to calculate the heat flow and how to balance the heat flow how the heat get balanced. Now, this is not the actual situation actual situation is that we have to use some clothing and then that we have to see. Now, we will consider the situation when clothing layer is introduced between skin and environment. Till now what we have discussed the skin is directly interacting with the environment. Now, clothing layer has come into picture and we have to be comfortable. Now, the situation now comes this is the situation where we have used we are using one cloth layer and this is the skin and from skin earlier we have seen directly the vapor gets transmitted to the environment no issue and if it receives it is receiving directly. Now, our clothing has to do has to perform its duty. Now, the thing is that if it is we are talking about the moisture transmission, moisture vapor transmission, this is suppose it is a vapor transmission. Now, the there is no free transmission of moisture vapor. Our this clothing has to be such that, that it is not restricting the moisture free moisture flow in the vapor form. So, there are mechanisms that we will discuss that through clothing how the moisture in vapor form gets transmitted. Even if it is a liquid form then it has to transmit from inner layer this is the inner layer inner layer to outer layer it has to transmit from the inner layer to outer layer and from there it gets evaporated. If it is heat then clothing layer has to transmit heat from the inner layer to an outer layer. Okay. Now, it is talking uh, it is about the uh, temperature when the uh, um, environmental temperature is lower than our body temperature. Now, in higher temperature like 45 degree Celsius or 50 degree Celsius we have seen that the radiative heat is actually it is uh, entering towards our body. Now, when clothing is not there we cannot do anything it directly enters into our body skin through skin. Now, here clothing's function has to be there it has to actually reflect back the radiative heat. So, radiative heat it has to stop at the same time the to make uh, our to keep our body cool it has to transmit the liquid uh, moisture or perspiration or, uh, or vapor it has to transmit out the moisture to keep our body cool. So, here the main environment is this is the in between skin and the clothing that portion it is known as the microclimate. So, it is not the environmental temperature which is affecting which is actually giving us comfort feeling it is the microclimate which is important. So, the microclimate temperature and humidity which is directly actually interacting with our body. So, this is the picture uh, you can show this is our uh, body and this one is skin and here is the clothing and through this clothing we try to, uh, transmits the uh, heat, sweat and insensible perspiration okay. and the microclimate which is uh, the temperature of microclimate, humidity and air stream which actually gives our comfort feeling that is important that controlling the microclimate is important 
and it is controlled by the proper selection of chlorine. Okay. Now, if we see the uh, what is our target, what should be our target? Our targeted microclimate should be 32 plus minus 1 degree Celsius. That is the temperature we should keep uh, our uh, microclimate temperature. Time. As we have discussed like our environment and temperature if it is say 25 degree Celsius we, we feel comfortable, but at that temperature environment and temperature if it is 25 degree Celsius if you see the microclimate temperature is around 32, 33 degree. So, this is the temp this is the zone where microclimate temperature is most very comfortable so, that is our and our uh, humidity of the microclimate we should always try to keep 50 plus minus 10 that is 40 to 60 degree or 60 percent relative humidity that we have to always try to keep that is the most comfortable zone. And if we cannot, so this is acceptable zone this is a this one is acceptable zone okay. and then but very uncomfortable you will see it is a high humidity if and the temperature high temperature this is the most uncomfortable zone, but here if you see at 30 de, uh, 36 degree Celsius okay, at 36 degree Celsius if your humidity at that temperature even at lower humidity we will feel uncomfortable. Similarly, at say 30 degree Celsius temperature if your humidity is very high we will feel uncomfortable. So, that this we have already experienced but our clothing has to be as such that we can control our microclimate humidity and temperature as per our requirement that is uh, to keep ourselves comfortable at least thermophysiologically comfortable. Now, the mechanism of heat transmission that is our body generates heat through metabolic activity and through skin it has to come out and which is we cannot adjust this is uh, this is there in the body physiology we cannot control. Similarly, skin should be able to generate necessary amount of sweat that also we cannot uh, adjust, but the thing which we can address adjust our clothing structure depending on the requirement we can adjust our uh, the generated sweat should get transmitted through our clothing ensemble in the form of liquid or in the form of vapor and our clothing that clothing should be able to transmit all this vapor and liquid to keep ourselves comfortable to keep the microclimate uh, with the required zone required range. Okay. This can be controlled by proper clothing. Now, earlier we have to have discussed that body heat that clothing is actually uh, acts as a barrier thermal barrier okay. it, uh, it hinders the heat flow, but most of the cases we will see it has to retain the body heat, because most of the temperature or environmental temperature is uh, the uh, lower than our body temperature. In those cases the body uh, clothing perform clothing performance is to retain the body heat it it is a hindering the body heat flow it is good because it should retain the body heat. Okay. So, the clothing is required to hinder the flow of the body sometime you will feel that the uh, hindrance of the uh, heat flow it is um, it is not uh, comfortable uh, activity, but it depends on the environmental temperature. Okay. When the temperature difference is say low say 10 degree. Uh, so, uh, 10 degree means atmospheric temperature is 27 degree in that case the heat flow rate will be slower. So, that we can uh, have uh, proper clothing with that okay, with a normal clothing, but the if the heat flow is at very high rate means the environmental temperature is low say 0 degree Celsius in that case heat flow rate will be very fast. So, in that case retention of body heat is very important and clothing can do that and in case of windy condition it is more severe windy condition the heat flow rate will be because their convective heat is very convective heat flow 
is very high. So, that way, so in that case you need to protect, to, we will discuss somewhere so that how to control the convective, convective heat flow. Okay. So, enhancement, how to enhance the body heat release. Okay. Body heat release, it is a basically high activity at higher activity such as walking and running, the thermal insulation of clothing reduces by forced air circulation. So, it uh, uh, so initially the body activity higher uh, it increases the heat generation and then it releases it reduces by human activity which is forced circulation. Then thermal insulation also decreases by bellow effect that also already you have discussed it is a pumps the fresh air and uh, that hot air it is uh, it comes out from different uh, openings. Okay. And it is further decreased by wetness of the clothing. So, if when the cloth gets wet, so its thermal transmission, its uh, thermal transmission is very very high. So, its uh, thermal resistance become low. So, it it releases heat at very high rate. So, that uh, is the body heat release is uh, in the all this may not be always sufficient because see the clothing layer also hinder the evaporation of sweat. So, heat transmission is okay. The, these are the activities we have seen, these three activities by which we can reduce, increase the body heat release. But sometime that clothing layer, it hinders the free evaporation of the sweat. So, that also creates the body heat, increase the body heat, because in normal condition sweat weights the clothing and clothing and the in cold condition it gets condensed. So, that uh, it gets condensed and, uh, but this all this in either cases the sweat removal removes less heat from the body than it does when it is able to evaporate from the skin, bare skin that we have discussed basically. So, uh, with the bare skin whatever sweat is removed it is not, we cannot uh, expect that it the same sweat will level of sweat will be removed when it is clothing. So, it is uh, the sweat release is always less. Okay. So, we have to enhance by designing the clothing okay. and additional sweat therefore, has to be secreted to maintain the heat balance. So, we, st we are sweating, but we are not that uh, the sweat is not getting removed that means, body is not getting cool. So, what happened? to keep our body cool, the physiology by physiology we start releasing the more sweat. So, we will start sweating again. So, consequently the wearer is too hot while he is inactive. So, this is this phenomena we have observed in uh, uh, sports. Normally, in when the where uh, sports person is uh, in active condition he is very, he is uh, although he is uh, uh, sweating, he is uh, actually he is sweating and when he later rests, suddenly when it is coming out, he becomes it is chilled, because his cloth is wet and his activity is re reduced, he is stopped his activity. That means, he will start releasing the heat very high rate. So, what happened? So, he will Im immediately he will start feeling chilled. That is why when uh, he uh, high after high activity to uh, eliminate any shock, thermal shock. Normally, players have been wrapped with some uh, cloth. Okay, so that sudden uh, actually it, it gives the buffering effect. So that it's a sudden shock is not there because the body is warm. It suddenly started releasing the heat. Okay, so the overheating of body can also be reduced by proper designing of clothing. So that we can do by proper designing. What is that? Creating opening. So, we can create different opening like in uh, wrist, neck, ankle, waist. We have seen in the uh, uh, sports clothing design, there are different portion where the name, uh, different openings have been created to enhance the body heat release. Okay. So, if you suppose in a neck portion or some portion, you will see it is not designed basically, although it uh, seems it is designed by some openings have been created like your uh, um, knitted uh, uh, openings, but these are created due to to enhance the 
body heat release okay like designing loose fit clothing okay loose fit clothing and in during activity during activity we have seen the uh, uh, in high active uh, clothing like uh, soccer or in uh, tennis the uh, clothing are not uh, tight fit it's a loose fit clothing and if you see it's a with a short duration like sprinting and all this there it's a tight fit long duration um, activity it's a loose fit because see this uh, loose fit clothing to have free convection of air and free interchange with the outer air so that free convection takes place okay that's why it's a, it enhances the body uh, heat release providing full zip so if you are uh, extremely hot just remove the so that you can uh, cool down quickly and avoiding the use of impermeable material wherever possible can further so you don't use we should not use the impermeable material so that it it uh, hinders the flow free flow of uh, liquid moisture or moisture in vapor form okay so if we take care of all these steps okay then we can actually enhance further body release okay body heat release okay but for uh, our uh, protective clothing for special protective clothing when you use we cannot use a single layer we have to use a multi layer multi layer clothing and multi layer clothing they have their different active their different function okay so here uh, the performance clothing assembly consist of a number of layers the performance clothing it has to perform specific activity okay and then at the same time we have to keep our body comfortable so there are uh, typically three layers was outer layer middle layer and inner layer so this is the layer this is the inner layer okay is a typically and this is outer layer suppose you are using this as a fire protective clothing so our outer layer will perform the heat protection like or uh, one is that it is it should be fireproof it should be reflective coating you must have seen that there are some aluminized coated fabric layer is given which is in outside because that will reflect out its radiative heat okay so outer layer if it is say waterproof we can have water repellent filling finish so there are different this this actually this is actually functional layer then middle layer is there and inner layer inner layer actually it's a tactile sensation we, which is in contact with our body so that has to be soft and it has to be touch has to be very uh, comfortable and you will see that the the body heat and perspiration should actually flow through all this three layer otherwise we will not feel comfortable so these are the different layers and uh, we will see different research studies um, later uh, where we will see that uh, the different layer they have their uh, functions okay now this is another layer it's a inner layer this is a skin inner layer middle layer outer layer and protective layer sometime uh, even after that we use some protective layer like your uh, hazardous environment and all this thing and in between this layer we we have seen this is the steel air layer so we can create that layer okay so inner layer has got its function its main function is the sweat absorption from the skin to keep ourselves comfortable direct cooling of the skin transmission of heat and moisture and tactile function so touch if it is not comfortable suppose we, if there is a prickle sensation some itching sensation some harsh feeling then it's it it is it will not work so that uh, that inner layer has to be all these characteristics okay then middle layer is basically it's insulating layer one is insulation it uh, provides insulation insulation from uh, say for extreme cold climate the body heat should not go out for extreme hot climate body uh, the outside uh, heat should not come in so this layer is very important it creates uh, insulation by 
uh, actually um, um, having still air entrapment okay. and then moisture transmission there. So, uh, it is a liquid and uh, moisture vapor form it has to transmit it. So, this function of this uh, the middle layer is extremely important we have to select this middle layer very carefully depending on the situation and outer layer is basically basic functional layer if it is protection from environmental factors like rain, wind, chemical, heat, radiation whatever may be. So, this outer layer some coating has to be there which will protect us from different this environmental threat. Okay. Now, so now uh, we will we have reached to the last um, segment of this uh, uh, session it is a uh, now step to understand the clothing comfort. So, we have understood the requirement of clothing and we know we have now uh, discussed about the different aspects of uh, comfort and now what are the steps. So, uh, uh, to understand the step, so first we have to know the as we have discussed the uh, customer need, the wearer's need uh, we have to. So, trend analysis we have to do. So, it is required to understand the their need. Okay. So, customer need is now it has become uh, very stringent, it is a uh, it uh, good look, good feel, okay. it should perform well. Okay. So, it should match with the attitude. So, th these are the uh, different uh, activities. Okay. So, for this we should have integrated knowledge. Okay. So, physics, physiology, neurophysiology, Okay, psychology. So, all this uh, we should uh, have uh, integrated knowledge on this. So, the, the steps of uh, to study understand the clothing comfort is the first is the market research. It goes backward, first it is a market research, then after doing market research you develop clothing and then to uh, it evaluate it by the wear trial technique or subjective technique subjective technique means by touch by actually by uh, questionnaire and all this. So, this is the wear trial technique. Then objective evaluation of clothing, so, clothing as a whole we can measure objectively so, with the by, by using some instruments okay, like uh, mannequin thermal mannequin. So, we can uh, get the total thermal transmission behavior by thermal mannequin okay. and objective evaluation of the fabric characteristics. So, that all these things we have to uh, do to study to know the clothing comfort. Okay. So, what is market research as we have discussed earlier also identification of target group, personal interview and consumer survey to gather, gather market information on the particular product. Okay. Then uh, wear trial technique, wear trial, what is wear trial? It is in the field in which the clothing are used. So, that you have to create the uh, situation like uh, um, uh, firefighter clothing we have uh, we have to develop. So, we have developed in the lab we have tested, but it is not it, it does not help. Someone has to wear the cloth, he has to go in front of fire exact situation close to that situation, then only you can say okay, this is the, the comfortable one this this will work. This is called wear trial technique you have to simulate the uh, um, uh, that situation that climate. Okay. Then objective evaluation of clothing, so that clothing has to be objectively evaluated. Okay. So, after wear trial technique that you got information then you test the uh, it uh, by thermal mannequin. So, it is a you prepare clothing the use uh, that clothing because uh, the wear trial means he will give you some he will give that the wearer will give us some information okay this is uh, perfect this is okay this is uh, gives the proper comfort and other but he will not be able to give us the exact value what is the thermal transmission what is the moisture transmission that we have to do objectively in the laboratory mm -hmm. so in clothing thermal mannequin we can uh, get the total information about the heat flow heat flow characteristics okay and next is the objective evolution of fabric. So, objective evolution of fabric 
you we can uh, do uh, moisture testing, uh, moisture transmission, heat transmission testing, okay. fabric handle test we can do and tactile testing we can do, aesthetic testing we can do. So, all these things objective testing we can uh, do in the laboratory and we, we have to integrate all this information. So, uh, market research and uh, then your um, wear trial technique objective evaluation of clothing and objective evaluation of fabric characteristics. All these things are linked if we have uh, we, uh, internally if we can interlink these things then we can actually tell okay, this is the fabric which is comfortable which is comfortable for a particular situation. So, a, a fabric if we tell that we, are, we, we cannot develop, we cannot have a fabric which will be comfortable for uh, all the situation it's it's not possible a fabric will be comfortable for a particular in, uh, environmental condition particular person and all that that's it's a if you say that uh, give me a comfortable uh, clothing it's not possible the comfortable clothing for uh, at what condition what is the uh, situation what is the uh, environmental condition okay so this thing this all this interlinking should be there and I think uh, this is the end of this uh, session. Thank you.